Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Welcome. Karen is back. And All right. so is my phone. All right, so there we're going to we have, a, we have a, a lot of callers ready to go, a lot of questions. We want to dive into as many of these as possible. Anything that we say is not meant to give you any cure for any coronaviruses, okay? Or so, any treatment uh, this is just meant, any kind. meant for information, do your research, check with your doctor, okay? All right, Karen, yes. uh, I'll let you start scanning for these good questions. Uh, yes. I'm going to jump right on to uh, Bob from Florida. He had a question. Hey, Bob, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Does what, uh, Dr. Berg, the issue with me is willpower. I'll get to two days, no problem, three days sometimes, and then I buckle. Like the other day, my wife, my daughter said to me, how about a sandwich, a chicken sandwich from uh, Chick-fil-A? I said, great, great. <laughs> and that was the end of my third day. Right, right. Uh, I told you. So Couple of days, I, I, I'm fine, but I want to get to seven to ten. Yeah, that's powerful. Let me just give you my two cents on that, okay, Bob? Yep. Uh, you'll have to practice something called uh, carb distancing. Have you heard about that? Well, and I you have to go stay ahead. at least I, I six think. feet away from a carb. Yeah, and then when you wear the see so you wear the you, you wear have the, to wear a mask. You wear the mask to avoid the particles of the carbohydrate going into your sinuses so you nose. you don't have that aroma but i think that i think the problem too is like when you're by yourself it's easier with other people especially if they're not on the program and uh you know some people are quarantined all day well i think everyone is so um it's a situation where you got to stay really really busy I, I think i would make a get everyone's agreement on this uh, in the household like okay no junk in the house you can't bring it in we have to have an agreement because as soon as it goes in there boom you take it, you take the junk food. What happens is like, now we have a situation where our blood sugars are elevated a little bit, insulin comes in, pushes them down, and now you're gonna be craving and you're gonna want it. So now we have to kind of pull you out of that situation. You know, <clears throat> there's no such thing as um, when you're coming off the sugar, like a sugar detox with symptoms, it's not what happens, you're not detoxifying sugar. Your, your blood sugars are just low, and because your brain can't store sugar, it has to get it from your stored sugar in your liver. What happens is your, your brain starts to um, crave uh, carbs, and it's really, really hard uh, once you have a blood sugar to keep your resistance, your, social, your carb distancing. So what happens is then um, you may have possibly side effects of um, brain fog or stress or depression or anxiety or irritableness, all these things that come with low uh, blood, blood sugar. So then you'll, um, it makes it harder and harder. So um, the thing is, once you start going back on keto or fasting, uh, it does take more than a minute to get back to adapt your body. It could take two and a half days. But if you're doing fasting, it should be a lot faster. But what's happening in this transition is your body is grabbing uh, ketones from the fat and then using that as fuel. Um, one thing I think would help you, Bob, is to, um, is to take some MCT oil. That way you'll get instant ketones, you start feeling better, you won't go through those uh, symptoms very much. It's a good transitional thing, but I think the, the most important thing is, instead of trying to resist it, get everyone's agreement that you're not going to bring it in the house and not to um, definitely, like, don't even give me an option of, would you like Chick-fil-A today? Bob, thanks for your question. A tree tea, you said something about tree tea oil? Was oh, MCT oil. MCT oil, it stands for medium chain triglycerides. Okay, there's an oil you can get, take a teaspoon a couple times a day, and it turns right into ketones, and then your brain will be happy, gives you more endurance. It's also antimicrobial, so it's good for the immune system. Interesting. Uh, coco it's from coconuts. Now, Sanders from California is on the line. Are you there? Hi, Dr. Burr. Hi. I'm actually from Canada. Oh, what part? I'm from Ontario. Ontario. Okay, great. Hey, um, so my question is, uh, I'm, on, I'm a huge fan uh, for, uh, for your advice and the uh, knowledge you give us. 
So uh, my question is, I'm doing intermittent fasting, and uh, I'm not on any keto diet, but the issue is I'm having hair loss. Uh, and uh, I know that you, uh, I've watched your videos to take uh, like vitamin B and uh, biotin, everything. But I take it as a supplement, and but I don't, I don't see any cha- any change in my okay. hair growth. So, what is the best uh, way to increase my hair growth? So, um, are you taking any trace minerals? I eat, uh, you know, like. Uh, like you know the shell uh, shellfish, like, shellfish? M- yeah like mussels and uh, scallops okay even prawns so I do that on a not on a every weekly basis but uh, like bi-weekly like w- uh, once or twice like you know on a weekly average you can okay L- let's say for example you're taking all the right nutrients uh, Sanders and uh, you're taking the trace minerals the B vitamins okay and and um, you're still not achieving this now. I know you did mention you're not doing keto. Of course, I would implement that for sure because I don't know what you're eating that um, that could be any carbs. But here's the other thing, especially in men, uh, there's another thing going on where you have too much something called DHT, which is a very powerful form of testosterone, and that can actually affect your hair growth, in which case uh, the, one of the best things I recommend for that is stinging nettle root. Stinging nettle root. It's a good remedy to counter that to help uh, balance this very por- powerful form of um, testosterone that could actually inhibit hair loss. So, so those, those are some things that I would I would recommend right off the bat. Thanks, Sanders. All right, Karen. Tell us what what we have on s- in social media. Social media. Okay, good. Well, uh, Ruth on Facebook wants to know if she's doing seven to ten cups of veggies a day. How much salt? Uh, one teaspoon a day of sea salt. In your food, in water, in through the food, through the day, any way you can get it in. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Now, Mina had a cool question. She's on YouTube, and she wants to know: When you burn fat, where does it go? You use it as energy. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, you use it as energy and to run the body. Uh, you have a lot of different things happening. You got all these different. You got the heart. The, you know, different, the brain, the brain actually requires a lot of energy. And so it's not just to give you energy, it's to run the body. That's what you use it for. So it burns up, gives you energy, and it's, it, with this, uh, this energy that's being converted from ketones, it goes through um, the energy factory, and then it, um, it get, has to be um, converted into the currency that the body can use, and that's ATP. So, um, so that's what it's, what it's doing. It's not directly in energy, but and then you have that sitting there for whatever you want to use it for. Okay, cool. So, um, didn't get a name here. YouTube also wants to know, what are your thoughts on Ramadan fasting? I think it's awesome, and I think um, what I like about it is that um, it's a good amount of fast, and you're doing it for 29 to 30 days, and there's a lot of benefits. The only thing I would mention is... Um, I think um, from my understanding, uh, there's not a requirement to do keto when you're eating. So if you were to combine keto with Ramadan type of fasting, I think it's going to be even better. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, and then one more here on YouTube. I think it's Carol Ann. She's bummed out. She did keto, not sure what kind, but she did keto for Mm -hmm. eight weeks and she didn't lose any weight. Yeah. I think never heard that before. I never heard that before, but I'm just going to take a wild guess. Probably um, you want to also do several other things with it. You want to make sure you're doing fasting. And for example, if you're focused on weight loss, that's great, but um, it's all about getting healthy first. So if you're getting rid of your hunger and cravings, then we know it's working. You have to give it more time. But the question is, is your waist shrinking? Are you doing fasting long enough? Uh, if you have a slow metabolism, if you have a th- problem with your thyroid, if you're past the age of 45, you may have to go to one meal a day or even longer sometimes. Um, but there are other signs, too, that your body's beginning to heal. So what would those be? If energy you're level. You're, you're sharper. Your, your mood is better. Those are the real big ones. Mm-hmm. Um, also, less fluid retention. If those are happening, it's working. If they're not happening, then you need to reevaluate how you're doing that and 
reread this book because I explain how to do it exactly. Um, a lot of times when you go on the internet and you get bits or pieces of stuff, it's like you may or may not be getting the right information. I know it's hard to believe that mm -hmm. there could be wrong information and on the internet. it can be confusing. I mean, it's a brand new way of eating. Um, I think the important thing, too, is um, yes, to educate yourself and then commit to it. And don't have a standard that's like, well, if I don't lose 10 pounds in the first two months, I quit. Right. Um, because that's not the point of keto and intermittent fasting. It's to grow healthy. And if your body's really strong and healthy, it's not going to be carrying around a bunch of extra fat. Yeah. So something you're doing is either working and it needs more time or you're doing something that is interfering in your ability to, to progress. But if you are still carrying that weight around, there's, there's more healing to do. Exactly. It's not two cents. Um, I have a quiz. Oh, I have a quiz. I love quizzes. And the first quiz of today, I have several of these quizzes, oh, quiz okay. questions. How much mucus does your body produce in a given day? Gross. <laughs> I think I'm not going to enjoy the answer to this question. So go ahead and let us know um, while you're answering the question. Let's just talk about mucus because Steve <laughs> is interested in this topic. Um, you know, I'm going to do a video today on the amazing benefits of mucus. And the, <laughs> it's actually an amazing thing that we have. It has a purpose. Um, it's not just something that it's, uh, you want to get rid of all the time. It reminds me of the rat snakes in our in our attic. That's right. It, everything has a purpose. You think it's gross or you think it's a bad thing and then you Google it. And, and they're great the, pets. The they are the easily trained and uh, keep you, the mice gone. And yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, mucus. Let's do it. So, um, how much mucus does your body make? Do we have the answers yet? Or are they still coming in? One and a half liters a day. You a liter. A hundred milliliters. A liter hosen? Okay. A liter, not a liter hosen. Now, in Germany, you have to convert that for cups. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Okay, so... <coughs> y Yvonne loves this wonderful man, and I'm guessing... You mean him, unless you're sitting next to a man that you love. <clears throat> Three cups, one gallon. The YouTube is all like the American standards. I'm, I mean, Facebook. And then on YouTube, we've got the milliliters. Yeah, we want this in liters, guys. Okay, one and a half to 1.7 liters. Okay, so what's your, think, what's your thought on this? A liter. That is a lot. Yeah, it is. It's like a, kind of like a Is that a during water allergy bottle. season or? They're yeah, undateable at one liter, I'm telling you. <laughs> undateable. On a, <laughs> on a regular basis. Wow. I mean, I guess, I mean, I think I'd go with a liter. People here are, um, thank you, Rita. She says, welcome back. Um, wow. Okay. This guy says two and a half liters. I guess it's up there. These people know, and their uh, Facebook is still on the gallon. Okay, here's the answer. The answer is one to 1.5 liters, and I know you guys hey, looked it up. I know you Mike probably did. Mike just said that, one and a half liters. One to one and a half liters. Are you guys Googling this? Uh, of course they are. Um, <laughs> How does someone know that? to one and a half liters of mucus every single day. Wow. Now, um, there must be a purpose. There is a purpose. There's actually seven purposes my video coming up. Um, okay. But it's one of the purposes is a, um, it's like a fly trap, fly trap for, uh, for microbes that shouldn't be there and they kind of can't get through. Most of your friendly bacteria live in that mucus. So you have mucus in your nose, in your throat, in your mouth, so. all the way down to your gut. And even in the stomach, if you didn't have the mucus layer in your stomach, that acid, which is battery acid, would put a hole right through it. So you need this mucus. It's very, very important, Karen. So you don't want to get rid of it. No. Um, when, <clears throat> your no when your nose is congested, congested when you're sick, it's not m all mucus. It's, it's swollen, so it might feel like it's all. Oh. So you can you know, blow forever. It's just not going to all come out. But the point is that um, there's a lot of important things with mucus that we will be talking about in the v video that I'm going to do today. But um, That's a teaser. Yes. So let me just go right to... Pam from Pennsylvania. You had a question about hot flashes, Pam. Are you there? 
Yes, I am. I'm so excited I got through. Thank you for taking my call. Where are Pennsylvania, Pam? Um, I am, well, actually, I'm new to here, so I'm not very good with directions, but I'm in a little town called Mifflinburg. Um, I just moved here uh, a few months ago. My husband was raised here. We just moved from Indiana after 30 years. So oh, wow. <laughs> where's cool. the nearest yeah, We're about in the center. Oh, the center. Okay. Harrisburg. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah, k kind of in the center. I think um, uh, Lewisburg is like a little town close to us. I'm it's not very okay. good with <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just here. curious. <laughs> I'm from Pennsylvania, yeah. so I was just curious. Okay, go ahead. Oh, cool. Cool. Uh, well, I'm calling, um, I'm calling about my main... Uh, issue with hot flashes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I've been doing this for three years, um, uh, you know, and I have all the entire list of uh, symptoms for um, estrogen, I think it's dominance, or adrenal fatigue. I mean, it's, so I'm just not sure um, where to go. I've been suffering <laughs> with this for three years, mm -hmm. tried all kinds of things, you know, um, natural uh, sage, uh, wild yam. Uh, doctors have tried to put me on antidepressants. I just I just all over the place and have boxes of supplements. So I was watching your videos and um, I just kind of want to know where to go you know, okay. from here. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've, there, there, I've, I've got the entire list. So. <laughs> so so a lot of times people, when they actually have uh, hot flashes, they, um, uh, they take the usual stuff, right? And it sounds like you're taking the usual stuff, but it's not really working mm -hmm. that well. Um, it sounds no. like you probably took... Um, you know, uh, I think you take, pro you take progesterone cream and these other things? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Black Every, everything. <laughs> yeah. And then have yeah, you also, yeah. have you ever tried DIM before? Um, actually, I just started that um, probably about two weeks ago. Um, I've just been taking one a day. Okay. Um, but um, I, I don't know that I've really noticed any difference. I know it takes a while for things and I've tried so many things, I give it like a good three months. <laughs> yeah. And then I kind of move on, but I'm just all over the place right now. So I just kind of need to get focused. And I thought, you know. Okay. You can well, help me do that. <laughs> the thing that seems to work the best that I found from just the feedback that I get is, uh, is a very high quality vitamin E um, that includes tocopherols and tocotrienols. Have you ever had that? I have not. And the reason why I wanted to just mention that is because you're obviously either how, how old are you like late 40s or 50s or um I'm, I'm actually 53 okay yeah 53. makes sense <laughs> okay so yeah you're right in that point where um what's happening is your uh, ovaries have just kind of retired and now you have this backup adrenal mm -hmm. thing going on and then what happens is the okay. pituitary which stores a lot of vitamin e it has a lot of receptors um it usually is very deficient in vitamin E, and that kind of throws off the whole pattern of um, these hormone, um, hormone balance. So if you took a high-quality vitamin E um, in a whole complex, I think that would probably give you the best help based on what you told me, and it seems to work good. It just seems to, uh, a lot of women, once they go past 50, they start really needing more vitamin E uh, for various reasons. Uh, the, one of the reasons why women live longer than men is because they have estrogen, but they need vitamin E to make that, so um, that's just one little angle. And then the other thing would be to support the adrenals. And just forget about like trying to do anything with estrogen, but support your adrenals. There's a great video called the um, Stress Webinar that you can check out. It's a technique that will help reduce stress in your body. So that's another thing that I would, I would do. And then. If you do all that and it doesn't work, you can always try iodine. That seems to work as well. Thanks for your call, Pam. All right, Karen. What's where are people calling from? Oh, well, I just started the list of where people are okay. calling from, so I'm not right. going to do that just yet. Okay, fine. <clears throat> well, but, um, are, do you, you have another quiz, don't you? I do have another quiz. <laughs> I have another quiz. Okay, go for it. All right, so here's the next question, guys. We've talked about mucus, right? Now we're going to talk about how large is the surface area of all your mucus? Okay, so like where it lays on the inner skin um, in, is this in like meters. In, in meters? But what if you, yeah. don't, if you don't know meters? Okay, do it in miles. inches, whatever. How much surface meters. area does all of your mucous membranes cover? That's the next question. Okay. Start. Start. Okay. Okay, what's your opinion on eating buckwheat or teff? Yeah, <coughs> teff is a type of wheat. I think it's used in um, um, 
uh, different cultures to make um, sponge. Yes. Bread. Yeah. It's so awesome. it's uh, um, it's not what they call it. Yeah. Even though it's really actually good. higher in protein, it still has gluten. It's better than regular wheat, but I don't recommend it because it does. Mm. It is a grain, and it creates problems. It's not going to help you on keto. Also, any grains in that, for that matter, I would avoid them. Now, the other problem with grains, especially whole grains, that you might not realize, is that when you consume, especially whole grains, or even wheat, or even, um, well, that's grains, or even like rice, <laughs> or brown rice, you're basically going to deplete your zinc because of the high amounts of something called phytates. And so here you are, oh, I saw this documentary that says I need to be, um, I need to start eating whole grains because it's healthy and all of a sudden you end up with a zinc deficiency which is so important right now with protecting your immune system which is a whole different topic. But um, zinc, a lot of people are deficient in zinc and one of the big reasons, especially in different parts of the world, uh, I won't mention any um, parts of the world like Indonesia, India, but you have a huge zinc deficiency there and that's because of the grains. Pakistan, very low in um, zinc because of the grains, Karen. Hmm. Okay. Yes, I think the last time I was here we talked about that. <laughs> Probably a month ago, <laughs> so it's okay, but okay, good. grains and zinc. What do we got? What, let's see if, uh, first let's see if Steve knows this question. How, what's How many this, meters? What's the surface area of the um, Lake Michigan? No, what's the surface area of your muc all of your mucous membranes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got here? Okay, so let me go down. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at 10 miles, Jennifer says. 10 <laughs> miles, I like it. Uh, okay, so more people on YouTube answering the question. Um, I have 60 meters, okay. 30 meters, 2 meters, 400 meters, 1 meter, half a meter. It's uh, all over the map. All right, well, what do you think, Steve, and what do you think, Karen? Well, I think I'm ashamed of humans. <laughs> no. Gross. No, mucus is okay, your friend. No, okay, we're, good. We're membrane. Having a Talk about the membrane, not the mucus now. We're shifting oh, oh, gears. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, 10 meters. That's what I'm 10 meters? Saying. Okay. 10 meters, please. What do you think, Karen? A meter. I'm going to say 75 meters. Okay. It's actually 400 <gasps> square meters. Now, Someone let me just tell you. Right let me, yeah, I know. Binet. <laughs> tell me, um, let me just tell you. Let me tell you how big that is. That's the size of a basketball court or two tennis courts, okay, put together. So that's a tremendous amount of surface area, isn't it? Who measured that? <sighs> you know, Karen, <laughs> now you're getting into some interesting <laughs> questions. But <laughs> the point is that it's a very large surface area. Um, and the reason is that, think about the job that you're your immune cells have to do to guard that much space, that much, you know, territory. Uh, constantly you have immune cells that are making sure full time, 24-7, nothing gets invaded. So um, more on this soon when we talk about the immune system, but that's a lot of surface area, isn't it? Yeah, like what? What is that? It's like all your innards, all Think your Think about the organs, inside of the nose. You know how the nose is kind of like curved like that. Mm -hmm. If you stretch it out, it becomes larger, right? It's the same thing with your your villi and your colon. These little up and down type things. You stretch it out, it becomes bigger. You take the whole surface area of your gut, um, all the inside, your lungs, um, your sinuses, your mouth. It's a very large surface area of mucus. Membranes. I mean, it's fascinating. It a is basketball fascinating. court. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Got you thinking, didn't it? It's got me thinking. Okay, so if you while got you're run thinking. over by a steamroller, that's what you'd have. That's, that's right, right, Steve. Right. Okay. That's right. Well, that, and now I don't feel like I, I weigh so much. Well, the body is very interesting <laughs> because. You have that much surface area you're lugging around. The thing is that the, you need the surface area to um, provide just kind of like. Um, it's my in, mucus map. In Dubai, okay, they have, mm -hmm. they built these islands, mm -hmm. and it looks like um, these different um, palms, palms, in the palms United, right? Uh, a map of the so world. So what they did is it created a lot more surface area, so you can have more beachfront. <laughs> Same thing with the body, you create more surface area to create more protection, to create more uh, functionality. Okay, Karen? That's amazing. You just chew on that. I'm going to go right to um, chew on that. Gabriella. 
from Vancouver, which is a beautiful place to live. Are you there? Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> um, thank you so much for taking my call. I'm actually so excited to sure. talk to you both. Um, well, I just wanted to thank you and say God bless you because you have literally saved my life. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yeah, and you know, if you guys ever um, are interested in me sharing my uh, my story, my testimony with you guys, I would love to do that. Um, put it this way, um, I could even show you a couple of pictures. Um, it's really, yeah, it's really quite cool um, because I actually was blessed enough to just turn fifty years old. By fifty years old, about two weeks ago or so. Happy birthday! And. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> and many people actually think I'm about 30. Wow. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. So I wanted to say thank you. And uh, intermittent fasting and keto definitely work. Um, oh, that's great. It's amazing. In, in yeah. I mean, go, go ahead. Sorry. So um, out of all the benefits of keto intermittent fasting, what was the big one for you that, um, that you enjoyed the most? Uh, well, all of it really, it, it's really interesting because for the longest time, the food that actually, um, that you have suggested to eat on keto and intermittent fasting, it's the food that my body actually loves. Mm. And wow. for example, seafood, um, you know, it's almost like my body was asking for it, you know? Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That so, is so fantastic. And, Can you... Um, Email us your success story yes. and your and, the photos. and your photos um, to drberg yeah. at drberg.com. Attention, Dr. Berg. And then what we'll do is we will do a feature story of you and post you right on the website. That'd be great. I would love to see. That. I would love to, guys, because sorry to interrupt. <laughs> I'm just so excited um, oh, to share cool. my story because um, you know I, I have survived a war. Um, a whole bunch of stuff, and wow. I'm still standing, and uh, yeah. Wow, so, congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's great. Oh, I can't you. wait to Thank see you. this information, then we'll post it, and then um, you can have to call again, and we'll just send people to the exact page, okay? Thank you, because I, I would love to uh, help people out, and just want to say God bless you, and keep up the good work. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Good for you. <laughs> well done, that. too, on yeah. persisting. And you know, you can get the information, but you're the one that implements it and sticks with it and keeps trying, and, and that's really well done. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Gabrielle. You. Okay. okay. Um, you know, speaking about um, diet and food, we just started um, reactivating our um, channel of recipes, keto recipes. So you guys need to stay tuned because we have a bunch of recipes we're going to be releasing next week. So it's in a different channel which will be right on our YouTube channel. If you look down, if you look in the channels, you click it, it'll be a different channel. Um, stay tuned for like how to, when it's going to be released. But uh, we'll release uh, several a week, and I think you'll enjoy these recipes because, oh They're my gosh, amazing, amazing stuff. So mm -hmm. stay tuned for that, um, and then definitely subscribe to that as well. All right, what were you going to say? <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. What's that? Actually, what That's I was going to say is, can I have your pen? Because I dropped my pen. Oh, I, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, but um, here is someone who is on intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. liking it, doing okay, except wakes up every night with headaches. Mm -hmm. That is, now that can happen in the beginning as you transition. But let's say you're doing it for a while. That means you're eating something that doesn't agree with you. It could be too much cheese. It could be something you're allergic to. Uh, that's usually what's happening. Um, the other thing that happens with intermittent fasting is you may have higher levels of uric acid, which potentially could create like an arthritic thing, uh, in which case you just need to add the lemon juice and maybe some more vegetables. And then the last thing is that you might be consuming vegetables that you don't agree with you. Um, certain people have something called SIBO, which is a digestive thing, in which case some of these vegetables uh, can actually aggravate uh, arthritis and make you worse. So there's, ever, there's things that you can um, you know, look at. I would look at my videos on ketosis and um, side effects in the digestive system in relationship to vegetables.
By the way, Doc, we've yeah. got uh, Adrian on line one who has that very question. So while we're on the topic, maybe you could grab that and uh, reaffirm what you just said with him. So Adrian, since uh, I'm on this topic, you had a question about that. Go ahead. You have headaches, basically, right? Uh, how, you yeah. how you doing, Dr. Berg? Good. Um, I want to say thank you also for what, what you are uh, doing for the community. I lost about 60 pounds in less than three months. Wow, that's wow, great. That's, that's awesome. awesome. And um, sometimes I wake up with uh, very bad headaches. Mm. And um, that's, it's usually when I do longer, like I do like a lot of 72 hour fast. That's, that's how I lost my weight so quick in those small amount of time. I don't know, maybe uh, it could be some sort of nutrient deficiency or, you know what I mean, who knows. Yeah. So, so I think it's, it's not related to anything then, um, because it looks like if you're fasting and you have the headache, that's a little bit different, but I think I just realized that she asked the same question with fasting. It's going to be a nutri nutrient deficiency. It's going to be that. Um, and this is one of the things that I always tell people when you do fasting, especially prolonged fasting, the benefits are huge, but you don't know what type of deficiency you may have simply because it's really hard to get nutrients from our food. So I always recommend to, um, if you're doing fasting, add you know, electrolytes, the B vitamins, trace minerals as a given, and probably omega-3 fatty acids um, to make sure you have the, um, um, like fish oil, or something like that, cod liver oil. And that way you're not going to be deficient in anything. So just because we don't know if you're deficient. The other thing I would like to mention to what's happening now with the immune system, our bodies do not store a lot of zinc. They sure store uh, iron, but not zinc. So if you're not consuming zinc on a daily basis, you can be deficient very fast. If your immune system is compromised, whether you have metabolic syndrome, obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, all these things that are risk factors for the COVID-19, uh, we know you're zinc deficient. Your body's going to be uh, more zinc deficient. So then getting the infection is can really de deplete you of zinc. And this is why um, everyone that, if they want to protect your immune system, get on zinc, vitamin D as the two things that are most important. Um, I'm going to be doing a video today talking about a study that was done in Indonesia, which is mind-blowing. They did this on the COVID-19. They looked at the relationship between um, people that had normal amounts of vitamin D, uh, insufficiency, which is a slight deficiency, and then deficiency of vitamin D. And the mortality rates, not just severity of symptoms, but the death rate was so significantly connected to people that don't have vitamin D. Because the reason why people are dying is because of the, um, the cytokine, the inflammation in the, um, the lungs, which cause all sorts of issues. Vitamin D puts that out. It's like uh, the water that puts out the flame. So it's like, but you don't really hear that on the news. Like no one's using vitamin D in these trials. So I will release the study. Um, if you know someone that is in the hospital or whatever, get them on vitamin D and zinc, of course. All right. So um, I think that's all I had to say today. <laughs> the end. Just kidding. Yeah. Do you have another call? Yes, we're going to go to Jen from Ohio. Um, Jen, are you there? I think your husband has some trouble sleeping. Is that true? Yes. Hi. Thank Hi. you so much. I can't believe I got through to you. I yeah. teach first grade. And um, as you all know, I'm teaching virtually from home. So I was able to get on the call. Usually I have, you know, 19 first graders in the classroom <laughs> with me. Wow. I'm trying to watch. So it doesn't work so good for doing a call. Yeah, but, I know. Um, yeah. So we've been doing, um, for one and a half years, we've both been doing intermittent, intermittent fasting um, and keto, and we're mostly two meals a day now. Um, but my husband has, um, he's, I feel so bad. He doesn't want, he won't go to a doctor. He only watches your videos and a couple others. And I mean, I don't blame him for not going, but he has terrible, like he'll sleep fine for days. And then all of a sudden, um, he'll be stressed and then he can't sleep mm -hmm. and um, he isn't sure what it is but he thinks that he's taking your adrenal stress he takes um, two a day like one at breakfast like when, when he eats he takes one at breakfast and one at dinner and um, 
I don't know. He he gets all revved up. He gets really hot. He can hear his um, his ears can hear everything. Like somebody makes mm. a sneeze or something really quiet, he can hear it and he can't sleep. I got it. Um, so question one is, one night it, we had. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Is it is it uh, getting to sleep or staying asleep? It's getting to sleep mostly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Does he have my sleep aid just out of curiosity? You mean the little thing that we lay on and, oh, the sleep aid, oh, the pills, okay. Yeah. Um, we did have it, I think we ran out. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, let me just kind of give you a couple things. It sounds like you also have that device, that massage device that you're using too? Yes, we okay. do that at night. I do it in the morning too. Okay. But, um, just because I'm a teacher, so <laughs> yeah. I need it. Well, listen, I totally understand about the sleep thing that can come and go. There's all sorts of things that can trigger stress. Um, and he's also doing the acupressure, which is a definite thing that's going to help. Sleep aid tends to help people go to sleep, right? Yes. Um, but there's some other things that um, you can do as well. Um, calcium lactate before bed seems to be a real good one. I don't take that often, but let's say I'm kind of... Like last night, for example, I, I watched some action movie, which I probably shouldn't have watched because I'm like all wired with adrenaline. Because that's what it sounds like he has his adrenaline's a little bit too high. There's a couple things that you can do. You can get one of those diffusers, those ionized diffusers, okay, in your room. Get the one where you can turn the light off because <laughs> the darn light will wake you up because it's going different colors all night. Um, but you put some water in there and it diffuses. You can put essential uh, oils. And um, there's um, a video I did on forest bathing, bathing in the forest. Um, <coughs> now you go out it's in the woods. It's not what it sounds like. You go out in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> it's Steve's not what you're, whatever Steve. you're thinking right now. <laughs> I can just see that. this now. I can just see Steve like, Alpha. Steve, what are you, where are you in the forest? Like, no, Naked that's not what I mean. Now, you do not no. want to see Looking me bathing in the forest, trust me. You know, this is a very interesting, the, the Japanese uh, did it, been doing this, and they've done experiments. One and. Thing. You basically walk, <laughs> walk through the forest and the pine trees, and you actually, the, the pine trees give off, and certain other uh, spruce trees give off this, uh, this essential oil, which increases your um, immune system big time, the killer T cells, so you can fight viruses. But it will also, they found, it will decrease adrenaline and cortisol. And I found it's actually, <laughs> it seems to be working pretty good. Um, so when we sleep with our window uh, open so we get some um, air, but we have this diffuser going off and you can buy this little bit of pine oil and just put a couple drops in there and it will decrease adrenaline and cortisol. And they've even done experiments where you don't have to necessarily go in the woods, you can just do it in your house or whatever and get this little diffuser and push that out. So, um, but watch my video on the um, forest bathing Steve, so you can get more information. <laughs> he's just been laughing. He's like, the he's like, you're just time. making this up, right? <laughs> like, like, really? Okay. You're, I should I most dance of what you through say, the woods? Is that part of it? You just sort of leap around out there? Is that, I'm trying to envision. Just walk and get. To, oh, I see. Just walk. <laughs> oh, good. And Jen, one last thing. Um, one of the most important things I think for everyone to do, especially if you're locked up in the house um, all day long, is you need to go out on a walk every single day. Mm -hmm for at least 45 to 60 minutes. That, I know the days that it's raining and I don't go walking, I just do not sleep that well. So um, the walking is really key for that. Thanks for your call, Jen. All right, Karen, do you have a question? Sure. Um, Arun has belching. Yes. Having done Omar in Keto and uh, now has a metallic taste on his tongue. It's gallbladder, 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 gallbladder. And um, so I would recommend cutting down on any extra fats that you're doing um, and then maybe um, increasing more of the opposite foods that are from fat, like vegetables, and keep that going. And you can also take a gallbladder formula which has, which has purified bile salts and even choline, which is actually in our formula. And that will actually help you take one after a meal, and it helps bloating, like um, the inability to digest fat. So you'll just digest fat a lot better. Uh, belching, burping, and um, bloating are all symptoms of the gallbladder. Of the gallbladder. And we will uh, take this mid 
mid-film live show moment to once again say for anybody who's just joining us that anything we say is not meant is to, not to meant. have a diagnosis or any type of treatment for any diseases. Right, or cure anything. But you know, also Karen, we need to tell people that we're actually, we normally do our yearly summit, okay, Keto mm -hmm. Summit. Right. We are doing a virtual summit. What that means is that we're going to be doing it delivered to the privacy of your own home. So we'll be able to, you'll sit and watch us. We have this, all these great speakers. Everyone can attend. Go to our, attend. our website. You can actually, I think it's even on, there's a link right on YouTube channel itself. You can check it out and I hope you make it. It's at the end of uh, August, August and um, we're gonna ha we have some amazing speakers. So I hope you can attend. It's obviously much less expensive because it's remote. So we wanna make it affordable for everyone to be right. there. So, so we should have all of you but it's going to be very, very robust. All the speakers, I think, you know, the yeah. experience may even be a little more immersive for people because, you know, right there in the comfort of your home, we're going to have, give everybody breaks too as we go live with this thing. So, you know, all the comforts of a real um, summit, but safely from your home and, uh, you know, just tremendous amount of uh, information. I'm really excited to help Absolutely. in that production. Yeah, yeah, it's just going to, it's like, you know, I already know most of you had great success with keto, but you know, you want to strengthen successful actions. If something works, you want to know more about it. This will give you the opportunity to, to learn all the latest information and, um, and just have more knowledge on that. And it's all about having more knowledge so you can actually be healthier. And so, you know, that's your long-term insurance, your health insurance that you should look at. The that's right. Getting the information yourself instead of depending on someone else to give it to you. Right, Karen? That's right. And then I would also say that for people who don't know it, um, your basic text on the subject is this book. It's this one right here. I uh, have everything in there. But this one right here is a kind of a short s summary like the of cliff notes. Yeah, the cliff notes. You can get through this in about an hour and a half. It has, has a lot of pictures, but it's a really good book. A lot of great positive reviews. I think on uh, Kindle we have like a 4.9 average, um, 4.9 star average. Wow, that's awesome. Of course, I only have one review, but still. <laughs> No, there's there's several hundred and oh, uh, gosh. and uh, it's yeah. So I mean, I put a lot of time into it, so I hope you guys appreciate it. Right. So you get the information there, and then also know that the YouTube channel is has how many how many videos now? I think we have like 30, 30, 30 40 um, times five thousand. No, five thousand. Five thousand videos. This man has done to educate you and answer your questions. You can find them much easier if you go to drberg.com. Yes, and this is what I, I want to bring something up about that. It's very, very weird what's happening. Probably this happened in October. Last I notice it's becoming very difficult to find information on YouTube that you're looking for. Even my videos, I'm like, you, you, you can type Dr. Berg in this specific video and it, you can't even find it. I'm like, what happened? I used to rank a lot better. So you just go to drberg.com. We have right. a really good all blog page and it has all of the videos classified, easy to find. Mm -hmm. You can search it by organ, by symptom, by. In addition to that, you we want. do have a an app that you can get. It's Dr. Berg app, and you can look that up. It's a free app, and that has all the videos as well. And it's we're just about to release a voice activated, so you can just go give me this video and just say it, and it just will play it. Just say mucus. Awesome. What's that? Mucus. Just say mucus. Yeah, and you can even um, ask me questions, and I will basically be there to answer every single question you have. I just run sitting it twenty four seven, end. and I'm just like, He's so you hear my phone. voice, yeah. Yeah, so there's yeah. a lot of tools. There's a lot of ways to get the information to continue educating yourself, uh, and the summit is just another really unique way bringing in uh, medical doctors and other healthcare professionals, and uh, scientists and and some surprise speakers. On that note, let's go to Paris from California. Not actually in Paris, but that's your name, Paris. Are you there? Hello, I'm here. Hi, Paris. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Great. I have a question. So last year, um, I was experienced like high blood pressure. I was like maybe living an unhealthy life. I cut out I like a lot of alcohol and junk food, and I essentially went vegan. And that lasted until like the holidays and I gained the weight back. So now I'm looking into uh, keto and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but what I noticed about my weight gain, I'm 
uh, like it's like a yo-yo diet in the sense of like my weight loss but i'm like really focusing on like losing most of my body fat from my my chest like my breast area so i won't have to go into like breast reduction so i'm just wondering if ketogenic diet will help with that yeah so are you trying to do it uh being a vegan or are you willing to add some other things to it i'm willing to add to add some other things to it okay good yeah i think it's a, it might be a good idea to try the keto because it's a uh, it's helped quite a few people. In fact, I'm being very sarcastic. Now, you definitely need to do this. It's going to help your health. It's the. It's not just a, uh, a fad. It's a. It's a new trend. More and more people are doing it. You're going to find out. This is going to work for you. Um, so start watching the videos on my blog, uh, video one, two, three, and uh, I do. I mean, you could try to do it vegan, but uh, but the problem is that it's so difficult because. You have to know about all these deficiencies and taking certain things, and, um, and a lot of people end up uh, with problems with that and having a hard time losing weight because um, there's so many carbohydrates in being a vegan that it's hard to keep those low and keep your protein high. So you end up having like, I don't know, tofu, meat, and this and that. So it's, it's not practical. So I would recommend doing it the way I recommend it, and I think you'll be very happy, Paris. So go ahead and try that, and then let us know how how your success is. Karen was laughing. I know she <laughs> was. laughing. Not She's at laughing anything you, no, not at anything me, you're not saying at me because, today. no, because Matthew D on YouTube typed, the chef quit because they cut his celery. <laughs> and it just made me laugh. Oh gosh, Karen. Sometimes you need a chuckle. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Okay. So a couple of times we've gotten a request. Oh, greetings from Italy. Ciao. Oh, I can't wait to go back to Italy. Uh, I oh hope, my I gosh. Hope, I hope they open up everything pretty fast. Um, That's our first so. flight. Okay. Anyway, um, lipomas. Yeah. Um, it, lipoma is a uh, kind of a fatty tumor that's very benign. It's not going to grow. It just kind of hangs out and just sits there and irritates people. Um, I have honestly have not found um, any information that can get rid of those. Um, haven't, uh, but you have surgery as an option. But there's theories that it could come from a liver problem or some virus. Honestly, it, what makes most sense to me is that your body is trying to encapsulate something, just like an absence, abscess that you or a cyst that's trying to hold something in that area. But that's just my theory, and I don't know if it's actual truth or not. Okay? Okay, good. Okay, now uh, Mina wants to know, when you're done with keto, then what do you do? Then you're good. You're good to go. So <laughs> if you do keto for two weeks and you're done, you've you pretty lost much, all your yeah, weight. Yeah, you're good, and then that's your pretty much it. Your hair is amazing. Your yeah. skin is improved. You have no loose skin at all. Let you me, have great muscle tone. Let me explain what happens after keto. you go back what? to the standard American diet. You, it's the keto is like a, it's not like a diet that you're going to just do and not do. It's more like a, a complete shift of eating, a new eating style for the rest of your life. Yeah, if you just consider it the user manual for the body, it's like the basic eating plan for the body. How it gets its fuel. Eating plan for the body. It, it it's it has so many advantages, not just in uh, lowering insulin and running your. Um, and running your body on ketones, which have a whole bunch of benefits for your brain and heart, and mood, and cognitive function, and immune system, but it also has benefits of doing the type of keto that we recommend is the called healthy keto, which is uh, not just lowering your carbs, it's actually satisfying all your nutrient requirements. So as you lose weight, you look good, and you look younger, and you're healthy for it. Th you might not know this, but, and I covered this in the, my last summit, but you know that radiation causes genetic uh, damage to your DNA, right? Radiation will do that. Did you know that vitamin deficiencies will also create similar, if not the same, damage as radiation? To as far DNA. as your DNA breaks. DNA damage. If you're deficient in folic acid, you can look this up, you actually could get, so it's protective, so you can get damage to your DNA, which then can lead to accelerated aging and all sorts of susceptibility to problems. Mm. Okay. So, I mean, so why not satisfy all your nutrients now? Because now you have the knowledge and you can actually predict what's going to happen. Um, now let me ask you a question. 
You just made me think of something here. So a lot of people think that they have the condition that they have because they inherited it from their mom or dad yes. or their grandmother. Or my family has a history of blah. Everything from hangnails to really serious conditions. What's your thought on that? I think that the genes based on all the data um, will contribute maybe a small percentage, maybe like 5%. Yes, you may have a weakness to a certain disease or this or that, but it's really something called epigenetics which is more important. That's the, it's above genetics. That's the things in your environment that can cause an expression of your gene to go one way or the other. And they've proved this already. So your environment, your stress level, your new, the foods that you eat, your social interaction, like all these things play a huge part in whether you're going to express this gene for this disease or not. That's interesting. So, so it's everything from a family, well, you know, I have a history of blah, but your family has traditionally eaten the same way for generations, the same kind of foods, or maybe it's uh, in an area of the world that are heavy smokers or uh, heavy, heavy, like, right. I mean, it could even be cultures. Or you could say, well, this particular culture or this particular group has a, a higher tendency mm -hmm. to experience blah. Mm -hmm. And it's not because of who they are. It's, it's more because of what they're eating and, 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 and their it, culture. It, it even goes beyond eating. It's like um, you hear those people say, people say, oh, yeah, well, my grandfather smoked like a fiend and drank until he was nine years old and he was fine. Mm -hmm. Well, it goes beyond nutrition. It goes into your stress level, your viewpoint on things. People are very strong-willed, and they're just going to—they're survivors, you know, just because they're very positive. They're—they're they're not basically they're not in fear. They're not in this fear like, oh my gosh, what am I going to? Mm -hmm. So fear uh, is a type of stress that is probably one of the most deadly things for your immune system and for your health. And unfortunately, um, this is. This is what's happening now. People are in hysteria. They're freaking out. And that's not good for your health. So one of the most important things is to be careful of how much news that you consume. <laughs> I would limit that. I would curb that. And, um, or you're, you know, hang out people that really bring you up. Um, and I think that's kind of like even more important than nutrition. It really is because um, especially nowadays. And by the way, speaking of news, uh, most of the audience knows that I had COVID-19 and got over it. But there is this rumor out there that you're just going to keep getting it over and over. The World Health Organization said that, and let me just offer a little hope for that. So when I normally get sick, I don't take my temperature every day. I just get feel bad, and then you start feeling better. Well, the health department told me to do it, morning and night at the same time. And what I discovered is I started feeling better at some point, and then a little lousy and so on, but I had a temperature for two weeks straight, low grade, but two weeks straight. And if I hadn't taken it, I would have said, well, gee, I feel better four or five days in, and then I feel a little lousy, take my temperature, and I would say, oh my God, I've, I've gotten it again. I've, I've contracted it twice, and it's not true. It takes quite a while to shed this virus. At least I was in quarantine, well, self-quarantine, for 17 days until I came out. So I think that's nonsense that, you know, suddenly there's no demonstration or proof that everyone's going to continually get COVID-19 until we all die. That's stupid. I feel great, by the way. I am not symptomatic. I have no fever. And people are not dropping dead around me. You guys are evidence of that. You're still alive, even though you've been exposed to me. So there Yeah, you. I just want to, I want to bring up that question because I think it's, I'm going to put you guys at ease. Um, based on all the information out there, and I'm, I'm heavily research, researching this thing. I'm talking like massive, massive research on a daily basis. And the question uh, or the point I want to bring up is that certain people, I won't mention their name, are putting out there that if you get the infection and you recover, you can get it again. Okay? Um, all the data shows that that's not true. It shows that you can build immunity to this virus. Okay? That's number one. What's really probably happening where there's some people that are relapsing because the way they're doing testing only measures so deep. So you could literally have about um, 2,500, I don't know, viral signatures, whatever. Um, and it, you, you, your tests are like, oh, you're fine. It's negative. It doesn't show any positive for testing. Yet you have about 2,500 left. So I think it's like the cutoff point is like 3,000. So if you have if you're getting out of the hospital and you still have a little bit of viral load left and then your immune system is bad, you go back to junk food, whatever, you haven't recovered your immune system because you, they didn't really talk about diet. 
they're not necessarily in the hospital giving you, you know, the foods that you want. And all of a sudden, you have a relapse. That could happen, but it's not, if you, what, what happens when you build antibodies, your body will then be uh, protected. And um, so I will do more videos on this, but you don't have to worry about that because based on the data now, if that was true, you would see certain countries just like flaring up like crazy and, or people that already had it, they're flaring up. You don't, you're not seeing that. I am going to also do a massive um, video on the immune system, and I also want to talk about the countries that are doing very well and the countries that are not doing well and the differences, so you can actually get that data. Um, I have, of course, watch your, people that watch their videos in all areas of the world, so we're able to get actual data that's not filtered out through the news. We can get people the data of the true information, so that'll be really exciting. Let's go to Gregory from Orlando. Uh, your daughter had an operation on the ovaries, and you had a question about that. Yes, I'm so great, grateful, that Dr. Burke, for you to be taking my call this morning. Um, my, my daughter had uh, this, uh, this surgery on her ovaries, and, and that happened in August. In December, she started getting a different, she started experiencing different issues, example, strep throat, uh, white spots, and a throat, and um, she, she tested negative for um, COVID, and, but there was these white spots that have been coming back on and off, and, and I think uh, she also has some headaches that uh, comes with her ovulation. So I was just wondering if you have any thought or suggestion that uh, we can apply to her situation. Where, where's the white spots? It's in her tonsils area. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, and this happened after the operation? Well, we have to believe that that is the case because she hadn't been having it before. Mm, okay. Um, is she on keto and intermittent fasting? No. Okay. Uh, we have... Go ahead. We have, we have been... Uh, applying alternative remedy to a situation like uh, reducing, doing a lot of juices and having her uh, do uh, the cleansing ever so often, but still yeah. it, her body is so weak because of this uh, surgery that she, she's had. Uh, besides, she gets a lot of headaches as a result of her, of her you know, ovulation. That creates a tremendous amount of problems for her recovering, and so we don't really know what, what to do about our situation. I have some suggestions, Greg, and of course I'm not uh, replacing medical care, but I just, this is my opinion on this. Um, first of all, I would try to convince her, twist her arm, and try to get her on keto and intermittent fasting, just because all the remedies that you give her um, may not be enough to overcome the food and the nutrition going in her body, especially if there's white spots around the tonsils. It could be some type of immune weakness, you know, who knows. Um, but get in the basics of keto and intermittent fasting as much as you can. And if you can't do that, at least cut down the carbs or, or sweet junk foods, that type of thing. The other thing that I think would be good for her is a zinc spray in the mouth, um, in the throat. That might help because zinc is very important. And last thing, um, and I always recommend, especially with women that uh, have their ovaries removed, there's a great remedy that I use in standard process. It just seems to actually support what's missing, and it's called um, Ovatrophin PMG. Ovatrophin PMG. Get some of that from Standard Process, look it up, order it, and have her take one a day before bed. Okay? Thanks, Greg. All right, so let's take the last call here from India. Uh, are you there? I can't pronounce your name, but so. Yes, my name is uh, Prasanna, Dr. Bhatt. Okay. Uh, my name is Prasanna, I'm calling from India. And uh, first of all, uh, I can't thank you enough for bringing keto to the fore. Um, I have uh, the COVID-19 shutdown has, you know, allowed some discipline and keto is going really well for me. I have uh, lost about uh, 20 pounds in wow. a month and a half, I guess. Um, it, it's really going good. But, but the problem is this, I've, I've hit a weight loss plateau in the last uh, one week. And, uh, you know, what are the, my question to you is what are the top five things I can do to break that plateau and I researched your videos and I understood that intermittent fasting, which I wasn't doing earlier, and HIIT could be an answer, right? So I've started that, but uh, 
but how do i calculate the amount of calories i know how to calculate calories and macros for myself but in a normal keto but how do i do that in the case of intermittent fasting if i'm doing for 24 hours if i'm doing for 36 how do i arrive at it because yeah. Yeah. surely i can't eat you know the 2000 or 1800 right. calories i normally consume right okay and, good question and, good question so let me just answer that real quickly um, because it's hard to find my video on that specific topic. I would not go by calories. Forget the calories. Go by hum, hum, that one meal a day that you're going to be eating, or if it's two. Eat as much as you can eat without feeling uncomfortably stuffed, okay? And don't worry about calories. Just make sure the, the type of food that you eat is, is really healthy with the vegetables and the protein and not worry about anything else. Because when you do intermittent fasting, your requirements for nutrients go down and you don't need what you need uh, before. Uh, you, so your body becomes very efficient. And you can start watching our um, cooking channel because we just, we're gonna be releasing an Indian series of recipes that are to die for. I mean, literally, if you like I bet Indian. he's got them better, but, but you'll learn. Keto friendly? Yeah, you'll just, you'll see that you can have that keto friendly. And what was that we, we made naan? And uh, we had uh, some other butter chicken is like no sugar. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Very good. Uh, that's a big deal for us. Yeah. Chicken masala. Anyway, mm. thanks for your call and um, let us know how that works out. It's past 12 already. Anyway, we really appreciate your attention, your questions. I wish yeah. we could get to Great every questions. single one. Great successes. I mean, I don't read them here, but um, especially on Facebook, it's seems like 50% of the comments, especially in the beginning of the show, are appreciation and successes. And that's you guys taking this information and putting it to use and trying again and asking your questions and watching your videos and putting it to use. And, and that's really, really cool. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. We'll see you next week.